Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Research Spotlight episode, I'm very excited to have with us Mark Campbell. Mark did his undergraduate studies at Kent State University in the labs of Professors Paul Sampson and Alex Seed. Currently, he's pursuing a doctorate in the group of Professor Gary Molander, where he focuses on dual photoredox nickel catalysis. And with that, I'll let you get started, Mark. Thank you very much for joining us to share your work. Thank you, Matt, for the introduction and for giving me the opportunity to present my recent research in a Synthesis Workshop episode. In this video, I would like to tell you about the main focus of my PhD research, which has been on the photocatalytic dicarbofunctionalization of alkenes. Classically, three-component dicarbofunctionalization, or DCF, was accomplished in a two-step, one-pot approach by the addition of an organometallic nucleophile into a polarized alkene. The resulting stabilized anionic intermediate could be subsequently trapped with an electrophile, yielding the three-component product. In a more modern context, palladium and nickel cross-coupling have been leveraged for dicarbofunctionalization of alkenes using reagents and conditions adapted from classical Kumada, Nagishi, or Suzuki reactions. While both of these strategies served as state-of-the-art DCF methods in their own right, they do suffer from a variety of limitations, the most pertinent being limited functional group compatibility due to highly reactive organometallic reagents, stoichiometric reductance needed to sustain catalytic cycles, harsh reaction conditions, the challenging preparation of pre-functionalized coupling partners, and the limited starting materials from which they can be easily accessed. However, we in the Molander group presumed that photoredox catalysis could offer a novel approach to DCF, which would overcome some of these limitations. DCF could be accomplished via photoredox radical generation, combining two fundamental transformations, the Giza addition and metal-mediated cross-coupling, into a single synergistic mechanism. And so our first report in the area of DCF used organotrifluoroborates as radical precursors and operated via the following mechanism. An excited state photocatalyst would undergo reductive quenching with the trifluoroborate to generate a carbon-centered radical. This radical would then undergo regioselective Giza addition to a polarized alkene, generating a new radical adduct. A nickel zero species could then metallate this new radical adduct to facilitate aerylation at the carbon alpha to the radical stabilizing group. While exploring the scope of this reaction, we focused on substrates which would be challenging, if not impossible, to incorporate into previous DCF strategies, and we found that many sensitive functional groups and complex substructures were well tolerated under our conditions. While we developed this method, several other reports on photoredox DCF were subsequently published, each focusing on a different class of radical precursor. While these methods proved to be major milestones in DCF, each of which offered complementary reactivity, the necessity of these pre-functionalized radical precursors often involves tedious or challenging preparation and a limited class of starting materials from which they can be accessed. Also, an inherent challenge with all DCF strategies is that an undesired two-component cross-coupling pathway is at odds with the desired three-component DCF pathway. While each of these DCF protocols found methods to mitigate the formation of the undesired two-component cross-coupling product, there was no detailed study of the factors which govern the rate and selectivity of various radicals in these competing mechanisms. At this point, I wondered if there was an alternative mode of radical generation that could circumvent the challenges associated with the preparation of these radical precursors, while offering a wide range of substructures to study the nature of these competing pathways. The solution that I decided to pursue was hydrogen atom transfer, or HAT, which utilizes an easily generated electrophilic radical to perform homolysis of an activated CH bond. In particular, diaryl ketones emerged as an exceptionally attractive class of HAT agents given their simple structure, tangible excitation energies, and long excited state lifetime. Recently, the Martin and Ruping groups disclosed reports on the merger of diaryl ketone HAT catalysis with nickel cross-coupling, which achieved aerylation of activated CH bonds. 
And if we consider previous photoredox DCF methods, while they were able to greatly expand functional group compatibility under mild reaction conditions, the pre-functionalized coupling partners were still a major limitation. However, given the suite of radicals which can be generated via HAT, it seemed that this method of catalysis could overcome these remaining challenges in photoredox DCF. With this in mind, we envisioned the following mechanism in which an excited state benzophenone derivative could perform homolysis of a CH bond to generate a carbon radical, which could undergo a mechanism similar to all previous DCF strategies. In the nickel cross-coupling cycle, we anticipated two possible pathways in regard to the order of oxidative addition and radical methylation. We assumed that the order of these events would depend upon the structure of each unique radical. After identifying an optimized set of reaction conditions, we found that DCF proceeded smoothly with a wide range of both aryl bromides and iodides. We chose cyclopentyl methyl ether as our model CH precursor, which demonstrated excellent chemoselectivity for the tertiary CH bond and only trace amounts of the primary radical byproduct. We then turned our attention to the scope of alkenes and were pleased to find that a wide range of vinyl substituted functional groups produced the DCF product in good yields with both cyclopentyl methyl ether and isopropanol as CH precursors. Additionally, a variety of internal alkenes could be used which generated products with a high degree of diastereoselectivity. In the case of dimethylfumarate, we isolated the anticipated hydroxysuccinate as well as a lactonized derivative of this product. In fact, we found that many of our gamma hydroxy ester products easily underwent lactonization with the application of mild acid. Finally, we explored the scope of radical precursors and were pleased to find that a wide range of functional groups were sufficient to activate alpha-CH bonds and affect the DCF reaction. A variety of secondary and tertiary ether and thioethers produced good yields while free alcohols performed exceptionally well. We found that non-volatile alcohols such as isopenocamphiol were also competent. Alpha nitrogen radicals were also demonstrated using amides and carbamates. We also demonstrated the first example of hydrogen atom transfer alpha to a pinnacle boronate. In the case of secondary radicals, we observed some direct two-component cross-coupling byproduct. And given the range of selectivities we observed, we decided to begin a detailed study of the mechanism. We collaborated with Professor Osvaldo Gutierrez at the University of Maryland, who specializes in computational chemistry of transition metals. Full computational treatment of the mechanism revealed two possible pathways for the formation of the direct cross-coupling product, depending on the geometry of the nickel oxidative addition adduct. In both the two and three component pathways, methylation to the triplet tetrahedral nickel adduct was found to be more favorable than the square planar. Overall, these calculations demonstrate that the kinetic product selectivity for the competing pathways is determined by the relative energy difference between the radical methylation and Giza addition transition states. And given that the energetic difference between these is quite small, it is highly dependent on the relative concentration of nickel complex to alkene. So, with this conclusion in mind, we examined the selectivity of a variety of different alpha heteroatom radicals and found a fairly predictable trend. Generally speaking, Alpha amido substrates performed the best given their low barrier for Giza addition, while alcohols were somewhat more selective than ethers. Surprisingly low DCF selectivity was observed for tetrahydrothiophene, and calculations revealed that this radical exhibits an atypically low barrier for methylation. We also observed a dramatic change in selectivity for ethanol when comparing tert-butyl acrylate and acrylonitrile. Previous computational work suggested that a hydrogen bonding interaction between alpha hydroxy radicals and the carbonyl of the acrylate acceptor may accelerate the Giza addition for these substrates. A more in-depth analysis of the Giza addition revealed that hydrogen bonding significantly impacts the transition state energy for alpha hydroxy radicals. 
This effect rationalized the improved DCF selectivity for alcohols as compared to ethers. However, we found GISA addition of the ethanol radical into acrylonitrile and terp-butyl acrylate both exhibit similar transition state energies. Further analysis of these mechanisms revealed a key difference in the orientation of the radical adduct in the nickel-3 complex. We presume that the carbonyl of the acrylate locks the hydroxyl via an intramolecular hydrogen bond, facilitating efficient aerolation, while the alcohol group is oriented toward the bromine in the acrylonitrile adduct, ultimately leading to protodenimethylation. Since the rate of Giza addition plays a paramount role in controlling selectivity for different alkene acceptors, we explored some hydroalkylation competition reactions. This allowed us to establish a qualitative ranking of alkene electrophilicities while isolating the effect of hydrogen bonding in the Giza addition step. Entries 3 and 4 demonstrate the dramatic change in alkene selectivity due to hydrogen bonding when using a tertiary alcohol as compared to a tertiary ether for CH precursor. The same trend was also observed in entries 6 and 7 when comparing phenyl vinyl sulfone with acrylonitrile. Finally, the addition of a chaotropic reagent increased the selectivity for addition into acrylonitrile by disrupting the hydrogen bonding between isopropanol radical and the acrylate. Computational analysis of these transition states was in good agreement with the experimental results, confirming our hypothesis regarding the effect of hydrogen bonding. Next, Equimolar ratios of acrylonitrile and terp-butyl acrylate were subjected to standard DCF conditions using either isopropanol or CPME as the CH precursor. When isopropanol was used, the ratio of DCF products greatly favored the acrylate. However, CPME exhibited an equivalent ratio of DCF products. Given that these selectivities were dissimilar to those observed in the hydroalkylation reactions, we again assumed that the aerolation step was significantly impacted by the nature of the Giza adduct. As expected, the reaction with isopropanol and terp-butyl acrylate produced an equivalent amount of hydroalkylation byproduct, while a large excess was observed in the reaction of acrylonitrile. Again, we attribute this observation to the alternate conformation of each radical adduct in the nickel-3 complex which impacts the selectivity for aerolation or protodemethylation. Finally, we examined 1-cyclopropyl ethanol as a radical precursor, fully expecting to observe ring opening as in a typical radical clock experiment. To our great surprise, we observed the cyclopropane-containing DCF adduct as the major product in the reaction with terp-butyl acrylate. A minor product was also isolated, which stemmed from a ring opening 3 plus 2 cycloaddition mechanism shown below. Substituting acrylonitrile for terp-butyl acrylate resulted in some cyclopropane-containing DCF product, but a majority of the ring-opened two-component cross-coupling product. We assumed that this difference in reactivity, again, stems from the difference in hydrogen bonding in Giza addition transition states. A computational analysis of the mechanism revealed that the cyclopropane ring opening is reversible under the reaction conditions, and that the Giza addition transition states for acrylate and acrylonitrile are similar. However, when considering the ring opening pathways, the Giza addition of the primary radical into terp-butyl acrylate is much lower than acrylonitrile due to hydrogen bonding. The alpha ester radical adduct then proceeds through an intramolecular 5-exotrig cyclization and subsequent second Giza addition to reveal the 3 plus 2 radical adduct. Attempts to locate the methylation of the ring-opened radical to nickel were unsuccessful, but given that only the two-component cross-coupling product was observed in the reaction with acrylonitrile, the barrier must lie somewhere between the two Giza addition transition states. In conclusion, my coworkers and I have developed a novel approach to DCF, which employs commodity feedstock materials while utilizing simple and sustainable catalysis to construct complex molecular architecture. In addition to demonstrating a broad scope across all coupling partners, we performed a detailed investigation into the mechanism, 
which revealed a critical yet underappreciated effect of hydrogen bonding. We anticipate that these findings will have implications for many photoredox reactions which employ hydrogen bonding motifs. Finally, I would like to thank all the members of the Molander group, but especially my co-author, Victor Pilates, and my research advisor, Professor Molander. Additionally, none of the computational studies would have been possible without the amazing efforts of our collaborators, Professor Osvaldo Gutierrez and Ming Bin Wan. I would also like to recognize all the various funding sources for each group that made this research possible. And a big thank you to Matt, who gave me the opportunity to share my research with all of you on Synthesis Workshop. Thank you for joining us for this Research Spotlight episode, and thank you to Mark for a very nice talk. If you enjoyed the episode, please support us by subscribing and telling your peers about this podcast, and feel free to send us any questions and comments you have. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date, and see you all next time.